I'm Mariana, your ASB Vice President, and today I'm here with SEED. It's a committee that I'm a part of as a student representative. And so on the screen, I'm next, so I will just go. And my name is Beth Laszlo, and I'm the Director of the Center for Business and Industry Services at Big Bend. I um, have been on SEED for going on two years. I guess I'll, we'll, go, we'll just zigzag. Uh, I'm Heidi Gephardt, I'm a faculty counselor here at the college. And I've been on seed for about the last four to five years. I am Alejandro Vizcarra. I've been a seed member for about two months, a student representative. And I'm Dr. Allison Palumbo. I've been a seed member for the last two years and I've really been enjoying it. And I'm co-chair with... Oh, so I am Mary Ann Zavala Lopez and I am the co-chair that Allison was talking about. Um, so I started with SEED way back. I was trying to remember, Heidi, when we all started. So back in 2015. Hello, Angela Andaibarra. I'm the Workforce Education Services Director here at Big Ben, and I have been in SEED for about a month. I'm the newest person to the committee, which is very exciting. All right, moving on to stating opportunities that SEED has for students. And I can actually talk about that since I'm a student representative, but essentially by a, you can apply to be a part of SEED by emailing the co-chairs, Allison and Marianne. Ask them, hi, I would like to be a part of SEED. Um, are there any student seats available? And go from there. So I highly recommend it. It's a great resume builder and we have bi-monthly meetings and they're always a blast, even though we do discuss heavy topics. During our meetings and we get to hear from, you know, from you students, Mariana, Alejandro, and, and our other student, Cameron, it really enriches the conversation because while we think we know uh, what students are, you know, what some of your thoughts are about different subjects and stuff, um, we don't. And so we, it's important that we hear from students and that it, it's just awesome that you're representing your peers um, on the college campus. And really, I, I also want to add that, you know, we have all um, committed to the SEED committee being a, a really safe place. And so being able to have the students, uh, the visions, the opinions, the experiences of our students at Big Bend. Moving on, what has SEED been doing? Yeah, so so one of the things that, um, that SEED did along with another committee on campus was try to, to help the college maybe define what some of the definitions are. Because when we say, you know, equity, inclusion, and diversity, it can mean a lot of things. And so it kind of gave us some groundwork uh, you know, moving forward. The Board of Equity, full and fair access to resources, opportunities, and services. Uh, diversity, individual, group, and social differences in cultures, expectations, backgrounds, opinions, and values, all of which enrich our shared community. And then inclusion, uh, the creation and maintenance of an accepting environment where all have equitable opportunities and support. And it's important that we re we remember what these definitions are because I think they are a little bit of our guiding principles, if you will. Addressing student advocacy. Students have a voice and SEED is here to advocate for you guys. So you like you're being discriminated or just like you feel uncomfortable with something that's going on in the classroom. I've felt that way before. It's happened, it happens. But if you feel that situation arising, you can always reach out to SEED members. And one of the things that's really important in terms of student advocacy and equity, inclusion, and diversity is that um, historically, and we know this, we have lots of studies now that show how students come into our school with ex experience with exclusion and experience with being held back or undervalued or under supported in some way. We know this is true. And so we know that you carry this with you when you come to be students at Big Bend. And we're here to ensure your student success in whatever way we can, which often requires us to do the work to try and make up for the exclusions that many students have experienced in the past. So when we talk about equity, inclusion, and diversity, we want to have a truly inclusive school um, and to serve students so that they can feel included but also help include others and students need to take a role in helping us do that and so that's kind of why Mariana is 
recommended doing this video in the first place. We want you here. We want those voices. Um, and we are all about crowdsourcing sourcing approaches to make things better for the students. We're here for you. That's the entire purpose of our college. And this committee is um, committed to helping the school improve that in every way. All right. And with that being said, let's move on to the diversity requirement, which is a project we've been working on for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'll let Allison take it away. They know a lot about this. <laughs> well, um, so by the year 2022, um, any student who comes in will be required to take a diversity course. Now, that still leaves another school year in between. We're still gathering. We have to do the preparation and make sure that we have all the coverage for students. But we already have courses that um, uh, help students understand different identities, different um, experiences, and are trying to broaden the, um, the offerings that we have here. So a couple of examples of classes that we already have, if you're interested in getting some of that education yourself, uh, we have an introduction to gender studies course. I happen to teach that one. And we also have a women's literature course that I teach. Um, we have a Humanities 214 course that is on diversity issues. Um, I don't teach that one, but we have some very good faculty who do. We have um, a world music course. We also have a world religions course, um, a, a history of Mexico course. And these are all already on the books um, and students can be taking them. So I encourage you, even if you are starting next year or you started last year or a few years ago, to consider taking a course that's going to help you understand a little bit more about um, power relations and um, but um, about power relations and dominant narratives and all of the things that are structuring the story and organization of our lives without us even necessarily knowing about it. And it was here when we all got here and it's still gonna be here when we all leave. So that's um, really why diversity courses are cropping up. And because in the, the workforce, we wanna make sure that our students are prepared to engage with a variety of different groups. Um, but also we want our students to be engaged citizens who can um, work with other groups throughout their communities. Really, there needs to be more education based on this stuff because Ignorance is the biggest issue with this. Even though it doesn't, an issue may not affect you, it doesn't mean that it's an issue we can ignore. All right. And moving on to why our work is so important, which Allison touched on quite a bit. So with, again, with things that are going on with the work, we need to help and we need to address them as best as we can. Mm -hmm. Yep. We live in a culturally diverse society um, and being able to succeed in that society and thrive, not just create a life of survival, but a, a, a life of joy, a life where you can thrive. Um, that's really what we hope to contribute to. And I was just going to say, I think that, um, you know, for those that don't necessarily define themselves as diverse or they don't face barriers, they haven't had barriers before and they don't feel like they face them now it's just as important that those people are also educated and, and understand uh the real world because it is through those individuals that acceptance will become broader and support will become available so you know it, it isn't just for the minority or the diverse population, it is really for everybody. That's what that's what this whole committee is is um, is geared toward. Yes. And honestly, we're a Hispanic serving institution, and a majority of our students are first generation, and so we need this diversity requirement. We need seed here because we are serving a diverse population of people and also shout out to the first generation students shout out and shout out to everyone else you guys are doing amazing we're in a global pandemic everything's weird extra weird 
extra <laughs> so weird. And with that all being said, thank you guys for being here. That's the end of this video. And again, I will put in all of their emails and names at the end of this video. Thank you to Seed for being here. I love being a part of this committee. And goodbye. <laughs>